Please, dear Chairman, thank you for your kind introduction. I am Peter Kustai, and I came from Hungary from the University of Szeged. And my recent research area is the humidity dependent conduction properties of hexagonal and monoclinic serum phosphate nanowires. Um, maybe some of you is not familiar with this technique, so just a few words about it. In a dielectric spectroscopy, you apply an external sinusoidal voltage to polarize your sample, and uh, then you measure the relaxation of dipoles or migrating charges in your sample. Here you can see some basic polarization processes, and uh, here you can find some material that can be uh, that can be examined by this technique. For example, amorphous polymers, glasses, ionic liquids, semiconductors, and even biological systems. Impedance spectroscopy is uh, uh, a bit different from dielectric spectroscopy. However, we use the same uh, instrument and the setup. Uh, the main difference between these two techniques is the interpretation of uh, the data set we get. And uh, in, in uh, impedance spectroscopy, we measure the overall impedance of our sample, which is a kind of resistance when alternating current is flow through the sample. And uh, the overall uh, impedance of the sample can be explained and uh, described as a uh, superposition of different kind of, kinds of uh, electrochemical processes. And these processes can be modeled by um, an equivalent circuit. And um, just, a, just an example, for example, the, the electrical du electrochemical double layer can be modeled by, an, by a capacitor and so on. Uh, by these uh, equivalent circuits, we can uh, determine the exact values of the processes that can occur in our sample. Um, when we analyze our sample's dielectric response, uh, we usually plot the uh, real and imaginary part of the of permittivity as a function of uh, frequency. And uh, there is another uh, representation of the results, which is called the call code representation, where the imaginary part is plotted as a function of uh, real part. And uh, this, is a, um, this is the case when a pure dipole relaxation occurs in our sample. So, when a pure dipolarization occurs, we get a dispersion in the real part and a peak in the imaginary part. However, um, in practice, um, there is much more complicated processes that can occur in our sample. <clears throat> Impedance is also a complex quantity, so its real and imaginary part can be also plotted as a function of uh, frequency. However, in impedance spectroscopy, the general representation of, uh, uh, the, of the results and the data set is the call call or so-called Nyquist plot, uh, which is the imaginary part as a function of real part. And uh, as you can see in this figure, uh, the basic and the most relevant information can be uh, obtained by the fit of this plot. And for example, the charge transfer resistance, the electrolyte resistance, and the double layer capacitance. Conductivity spectroscopy uh, can be deployed as a, as a, how to say, sub, uh, deployed to support our impedance spectroscopic. Uh, uh, results and here you can see a um, conductivity spectrum of a well conducting material and this spectrum can be divided into three different regions. Uh, this region 
is the high frequency dispersion. This middle region is uh, called the DC plateau region, and uh, here you can find the electrode polarization region. From this spectra, the DC conductivity of our sample can be easily obtained by the fitting of this region and the intercept on the ordinate will be shown as directly DC conductivity. So, when we started to measure our uh, samples, we used two different kinds of uh, uh, material, which was the same because it was serum phosphate, but it, um, they had uh, different kinds of crystal structure. One is the hexagonal one, and the other one was the monoclinic one. It was proved by XRD study also. The, for, the, for dielectric measurements, we drop tested the samples onto alumina supported micropatterned electrodes, and these electrodes were placed into sealed glass vessels containing saturated salt solutions to ensure the desired relative humidity. And the, we measured these samples with uh, an external sinusoidal voltage of 1 volt and uh, with uh, a frequency range of 10 millihertz to 10 megahertz. And also the relative humidity was from 6 to 100 percent. After we obtained our uh, experimental data set, we used two different kinds of uh, evaluation. We used uh, uh, an impedance spectroscopic and uh, dielectric spectroscopic uh, evaluation. And, uh, Impedance spectroscopic and conductivity spectroscopic measurements were carried out to obtain the resistance of our samples by two different methods. And uh, these values were obtained, as I mentioned before, by the fitting of uh, the um, experimental data set by the appropriate equations. Here you can see the Permittivity, the imaginary part of permittivity of the sample at 33% uh, of relative humidity and you can see that there is a huge difference between this graph and the graph I showed before uh, when a pure dipole relaxation uh, exists in the sample. Here you can see that uh, a huge conductivity tail appears in this uh, in this plot, and this, uh, this conductivity tail totally suppresses the relaxations which can also occur in our samples. So we used another uh, representation, which is the modulus, the dielectric modulus, uh, as a function of frequency. Because of the because of the reciprocal relation between modulus and uh, uh, permittivity, the relaxations here become much more um, stressful in modulus representation. Here you can see the humidity dependence of uh, the di dielectric response in modulus representation. Here is the uh, sample at 6% of relative humidity and this is the sample with 100% of relative humidity. You can see that there is a shift to higher frequencies with uh, increasing relative humidity. Uh, here you can see a single uh, modulus uh, which can be uh, which, is, which consists of three different uh, relaxations with um, three different uh, characteristic relaxation times and uh, these relaxation times were also f mm, plotted as a function of relative humidity and you can see that uh, the relaxation times of the processes decreasing with relative humidity and uh, there is a question what processes could cause these uh, relaxations and uh, we know that 
our samples doesn't um, contain any dipoles and uh, we can also see that the relaxation times um, depends on the relative humidity and the conduction of the material. So we suggest that these relaxations um, can be referred to um, interfacial polarization in the sample. And this is the uh, last slide of my presentation. Here you can see the, the resistance values that uh, was uh, evaluated by two different methods. And you can see that these values correlate well. well. And uh, also you can see a difference between the two sample because this upper part, upper plot, uh, is the uh, resistance values of the monoclinic nanowires. And here you can see the resistance values of the hexagonal nanowires. You can see that um, these values uh, significantly decrease uh, with increasing relative humidities. However, in the in lower relative humidities, there is a um, almost one order of magnitude difference between these resistances, and this resist this difference um, totally disappear when we reach the 62% of relative humidity and uh, remain nearly um, similar about this uh, relative humidity. And now, a short conclusion, hexagonal and monoclinic monowires were examined by the electric and impedance spectroscopy techniques. Uh, three relaxations could be observed in the case of both samples. The relaxations suggested to be related to interfacial polarization. Resistance of the samples were obtained by two different methods. And uh, hexagonal nanowires featured uh, nearly one order of magnitude lower resistance than monoclinic nanowires at lower frequencies. So hexagonal nanowires could be employed as a more efficient humidity sensor as one of the analyzers. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So it's time for the questions. Uh, thank you for the uh, very nice report. Uh, just uh, want to ask, do you measure the dependence of conductivity uh, or polarization on the concentration of your wires, it means how you prepare the sample. Because I know that if you have uh, wires which are separated, you have one conductivity, but when they become overlapped, you will obtain another conductivity. Mm -hmm. um, we, prepared our, we prepared our samples by a simple... So we drop-casted our samples onto uh, an electrode from a water suspension. So. Uh, it's it's randomly oriented, mm -hmm. and the concentration is what hasn't been measured yet. So I don't I can't tell you any about this. It could be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Okay. Any questions? Um, maybe I have. Ah, sorry. Um, have you tested how long? Uh, the nanowires uh, comes out, or how long can we be more until we disintegrate? Or, yeah. mm -hmm. So, you say that the nanowires uh, mm, disintegrate uh, because I apply a voltage on it? Or, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, understand. normally, if you put a sensor on air, uh -huh. it, it hasn't been tested yet. And we are very sensitive to the mm, They are very stable. Uh, this is a very stable material. Uh, if you mean um, uh, against temperature, it, mm -hmm. it was tested against temperature and uh, they can they can maintain their structure 
up to 600 Celsius degrees. So, uh, but 400 Celsius degrees, it is surely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you. Thank you.